I'd like to talk about a story I just wrote in conjunction with Will Salmon of The Athletic. The story was entitled Beyond the Slap, Whatever You Think You Know About Tommy Pham, You Don't. And it was a story that kind of came together in an unusual way. So shortly after the deadline, I'm at City Field and I'm talking with Mets assistant hitting coach Eric Hinsky. And he mentions to me, we're really going to miss Pham. And I said, really? I mean, they just traded Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander and he brought up Tommy Pham. Now I know he's the assistant hitting coach, but that was the guy he mentioned. And he said, guy was an amazing teammate. Go ask Lindor about him and he'll tell you. He'll tell you that Tommy Pham taught him how to work harder. So I asked Lindor about that. And he did in fact say what Eric Kinski predicted he would say. And I wrote a short item about that for the windup, the Athletics Free Daily Baseball Newsletter. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm talking with the Diamondbacks general manager, Mike Hazen. And I asked him, and this is a question I sometimes will ask of GMs, hey, who's on your team right now that maybe I should be writing about? Who do you think maybe should deserve more attention than he's getting? Right away, Tommy Pham, and he was the one who said, whatever you think you know about Tommy Pham, you don't. So I mentioned this to Will Salmon, who had covered the Mets all season. And Will said, it's funny you mention these conversations because I was just talking with Buck Showalter the other day and he informed me that when Pham left the team, he had a meeting with Pham as a manager normally would with a player who was departing. And the meeting kind of touched him. The meeting was a little bit different, a little bit more emotional than most of those kinds of meetings usually are. So from that point, Will and I kind of put our heads together and said, you know what? Let's start asking more people about Tommy Pham. Let's see what we can find out. Let's see if this is a consensus around the game that this guy, though the perception of him is he's the guy who slapped Jock Peterson. He was the guy who was an innocent bystander who was stabbed outside a nightclub in San Diego. This is the reputation that a lot of fans have of him, the perception that a lot of fans have. Doesn't sound like it's necessarily the accurate perception. So Will and I talked to a dozen people, a dozen people who had played with Tommy Pham, coached him, managed him, and we came up with the story. And the story was mostly about just what the headline said. Whatever you think you know about this guy, you don't. He's a great teammate. He's a tremendous worker. He is a guy who is an extremely serious student of the game. He's always thinking, always working. So we write this story, and the idea was to give the reader insight into a player that he or she might have thought completely differently about. And what I like about it is I didn't know a lot of this. So we're sharing things, Will and I, that we didn't know. And we were confident that many people, many fans didn't know that either. So we published the story and the comments flow in. And listen, comments aren't everything. I pay attention to them. I never respond to them or hardly ever respond to them. People are entitled to their opinion. But it surprised me to see that a lot of fans reacted instead of saying, hey, that was kind of interesting. Some did say that, in fairness. But a lot said, nope, he's still a jerk. I think he's a jerk. He slapped Jock Peterson. You know what? Once my son asked him for an autograph and he said no. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion, as I said. But it seems to me, maybe the opinions of people who have competed alongside Tommy Pham should count more than the average fan who's watching on his TV or even at the ballpark. And this is the kind of thing that sometimes frustrates people in my business. When fans, you present them with something and you're not necessarily trying to change their mind, but you're trying to give them insight and they still don't see it. Now, subsequent to the publication of that story, I received a long text from another former teammate of FAMS, a guy we did not interview for the story. And he basically said, you guys nailed it. He's one of my favorite teammates ever, and I love him. I'm glad you guys wrote that. Then when I was in Tampa Bay over the weekend, someone with the Rays came up to me and said, you know what? That guy, I love that guy, Tommy Pham. He's the only player I keep a baseball card of. So clearly within the game, his reputation is one thing. Outside the game, among certain fans, his reputation might be another. Now, I don't want to get too down on fans for their negative perceptions, negative opinions. It's their absolute right. It's why we love sports. The debate, 
the opinions, all of that. It's a free country. You're entitled to say whatever you want. And heaven knows, in the age of social media, people will say whatever they want, and often without consequence. But that said, sometimes readers and viewers lose track or lose sight of what our jobs are. Our jobs are to tell you in a deeper sense what is going on with a particular player or a team. Could be positive, in the case of Tommy Pham here it was. Could be negative, as it sometimes is when we're covering a team, particularly a struggling team. That's how it works. Now I know there are times when fans will say when I'm writing negatively about their team, hey man, leave us alone. We know all about it. We don't need to hear anything more from you or anybody like you. Well, sorry, that's not the way it works. And I think back to the Mets this season, and there was a lot written by myself and others earlier in the season when they were collapsing. And the reason it was all written is because this is the biggest fall in Major League history, or the biggest disappointment in Major League history based on payroll. And there was a lot that came with that. And there were trades that were made to hopefully, in their minds, set them on the right course. Again, readers and viewers are not going to dictate to me what I write. Really, no one dictates to me what I write. And we are going to follow the stories that we think are the right stories to follow. On the other side of it, when fans look at beat writers and say, hey, why are you writing this about my team or this player? What are you doing? It's not our job to be cheerleaders. It's not how it works. It's our job to tell you what's going on. And at The Athletic, we are more aggressive, I would say, than most outlets in both a positive and negative sense. We cover this sport aggressively. We're going to continue to do that. That is kind of the ethic we've established. And some fans will like it at times, some fans will not like it. But the goal always, in the stories that are positive, like the one about Tommy Pham, and in the stories that are negative, the goal always is to tell the reader something he or she doesn't know, to give the reader insight. That's what we do. It's what we're going to continue to do, no matter what you guys say.